I'm Jameson with Works, and this is the Glock 40 Problem Solver. We are reviewing the 10 millimeter Glock Model 40. So we just got this gun in the shop, and over the next month, I'm gonna be shooting a thousand rounds through this, and we're gonna be focusing on the performance from a defensive context. I'm going to be using a set of drills as well as a shot timer to measure the performance that I have with this gun. But before we get to that part, I'm going to be doing a lot of practicing with it so I can get used to not only this gun, but also improve on some of my own skill too. So one of the biggest questions I had before shooting this gun was can I take 10 millimeter and replace nine millimeter with it? Probably the main reason why you'd carry a 10 millimeter Glock in this case is if you're gonna be defending against bears, if you're up in Alaska, a lot of those Alaska guys up there really like the Glock 40 or the Glock Model 20. That's a huge reason for it. Along with that, if you wanna carry it daily, it's because you have that issue, right? At the same time, for your daily carry, if you're not always around bears necessarily out in the woods, you might not wanna transition from this gun with this recoil impulse to this gun with this different recoil impulse. You have less investment because it's just one gun. Along with that, if you want to have just the ultimate power, the most foot pounds of energy coming out of that out of that barrel, the 45 AARP is only doing so much really when you actually look at the numbers. So when you jump up to 10 millimeter, especially a lot of the underwood ammo in particular, those things can be pushing, you know, past 1300, 1400, 1500 feet per second, which is the majority of where we get our energy. Another reason you might carry 10 mil is because you want to see if you can actually do it. <laughs> so our first test is going to be the bill drill. At 70 yards, it's going to be six shots from the holster in the A zone. Three seconds is doing okay, but I'd be happier at two or under. We'll see what we can do. We're looking for speed out of the holster and then really good grip for that recoil control for follow-up shots. Twenty-one feet. And on the buzzer. That felt like a slow first shot. I threw one, uh, another one a little bit low, but it's in, and then I have the other ones all stacked within each other. I could have gotten faster on the other shots, but the first one was a little bit slow. We have a 2.97 for our, first, for our uh, final time, and 1.69 is the first shot, a 2.8, a 2.5, a 2.4, a 2.6, and a 2.5 for split, so pretty consistent. Let's go up and take a look. So that one's just barely out, one a little bit low, and then I have one, two, three, four. <laughs> so that's pretty good. I could have gone faster for most of that, but I just needed to have a little bit more control overall. This is the Glock Model 40, so it's gonna be your 6.2 inch barrel. It's a much, much larger gun than a nine mil or than a 40 or than a 45 because of that barrel length. It's the longest Glock that they make currently. Being used to that platform, yes, I have to get used to the thicker gun and I have to get used to the more recoil impulse. I feel a little slower going to get it out of the holster too, but that was really the biggest differences for me. It is a heavier gun. I don't know it's too much. The thickness on the gun as well, it's not too terrible for me. I'm a big guy. For me, adding on another pound for my carry ammo, for my carry gear and all that stuff isn't too bad. So our next test is the test. It is 10 shots at 10 yards with a 10 second par time. Any time, any shots over 10 seconds, I will deduct my next best hit on paper. The X ring and 10 ring are both worth 10 points. Nine is worth nine, eight is worth eight. Anything outside of that is worth nothing. I have a potential score of 100. I'm gonna try to get above 90. Let's see what we can do. All right, shooter ready, stand by. I think I barely snuck that last one in there before the buzzer. I heard the buzzer after, yep. Last shot was a 9.48, so we're good for time. 2.27 first shot, it's kind of slow. 
seven eight split, nine eight split, eight three, seven eight, eight seven, seven four, seven seven, seven nine, six seven were my splits. So I was kind of up and down on that. Let's see what we what we get there. So here's my grouping. And we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all ten shots are on target. I have one, two, and the eight. So we are down two, down four, down. These are uh, line breaks, so it's gonna be the nine. So down two, down four, down five, down six, down seven, down eight. Those are in the ten ring. So I have a ninety-two is my is my uh, score. So I'm feeling okay on that. I would like to clean those up a little better but not too bad. When I first went to shoot this gun, I was really curious on the recoil impulse and how much more it's gonna shoot, it's gonna fly out of my hands, you know, what's gonna happen. And while it is more, and I can definitely, after shooting, you know, 100 rounds, 250 rounds in three or four hours, that's a lot of ammo going down, burning through really fast. And my hands will definitely get really tired from that. They'll really get fatigued. And during that process, I did have a few times where actually my left hand wasn't doing that death grip like I wanted to. It was allowing the gun to move independent of my left hand more. And then as it came up, my palm pressed into the mag release where it came up and the magazine dropped down during recoil. Uh, it's something to understand that can happen with my hands especially. So our next test is the FAST. That's the Fundamentals of Accuracy and Speed Test. This is done at seven yards. I'm gonna be doing it from concealment. And the course of fire is two to the chest, sorry, two to the head, slide lock reload, and four to the center circle. To be fair, <laughs> not to make an excuse, this is printed on a small piece of paper. So this is actually like a six inch circle and that's like a two and a half by four card. It's supposed to be a three by five card and an eight inch circle, but I'm taking what I get out of this. Land breaks will be in, anything out is down points. I'm just gonna try to keep everything in there anyway. So let's see what we can do. All right. Draw two to the head, slide like reload, four to the circle. Whew. Ready? Stand by. Whew. I dropped one in the head. I have a 6.02 for my total time. Let's go and take a look. So one in, one out, reload four in there. Those are all great, but I got one out there. And then for misses, it's a pretty good penalty, I think. So we got yeah. Two second penalty, so I have a total time of 8.02 seconds with that penalty. Would it be in with the three by five card? I said this is what's gonna happen, what's gonna count, so it's what it is. Overall, for the recoil and pulse, I can actually shoot pretty darn quick with this for my splits compared to nine mil. I'm getting staying in the A zone, I'm getting a lot of I'm do if I'm doing my job properly, I'm still getting 0 0.20, 0 0.18 splits, and I actually can stay in an A zone if a USBSA target. So for this review, I wanted to carry it how I would carry the gun myself. I chose to carry appendix in our M6 holster. I've been carrying appendix in our M6 holster for years and years now. Uh, where I live, I do have some mountain lions, uh, coyotes I'm less worried about for a larger caliber, but, and there's some bears here and there, uh, a little bit further out, but I am, I am in that area. So it is nice to be able to actually have a little bit bigger caliber on there for me to really actually be able to puncture through those animals if I need to in a defensive situation. So I felt like carrying appendix all day long, every day at work here. I also ran it through a uh, pistol class with Samuel Middlebrook of Red Hawk Firearms Training. That was a great class to run it through as well because it was a concealed carry experience class. And that was a really good time to really help fine tune my draw, my grip, recoil and pulse, trigger press, everything that in, that is uh, involved in that class was just really great to shoot that. My first time I went out to shoot it, we came out here and we shot about 250 rounds or so through it. Just getting used to the gun really. First I zeroed the red dot. I got it dialed in at 10 yard zero. That's what I'm used to as well with my clock model 45. And that just worked great. That was pretty quick and easy. I had to make sure that I was really controlling that gun because I was wanting to kind of press down. <laughs> my arms are still smoked from trying to handle that 10 mil. So doing 200 rounds plus is, is definitely gonna, you're gonna feel it in your arms, I think. So 
The next test is the DeFore Performance Pistol Hat Qual. This is on an NRA B8 target at 25 yards, a 20 second par time shooting 10 shots. A 90 or better is a pass. I'll be very happy with a pass uh, shooting this, this Glock 40. So let's go find out. So one that's funny is people will say, let's see how well this gun shoots. But really the, the thing you want to say is, let's see how well I can shoot this gun. So let's see how well I can shoot this gun here at 25 yards. We got it taped out already. Can't even see the target from here almost. All right. Got a 20 second part time on the timer already. 10 shots, 20 seconds, take your time. Shooter ready, stand by. I could have milked that a little bit more for time. 16.50 uh, was my total time. Three seconds for my first shot, took my time on that. 129, 106, 143, 153, 158, 175, 164, 158, 155 for my splits. So I'm trying to make sure I take up all that time I can to get the best score I can. So first, let's see what we got. Looks like we already have a mess off the paper. So that's one. So first, make sure all 10 are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all 10 are on cardboard, but not all on paper. So we have down 10 in this case, I guess that's how it's gonna be. Uh, down 11, 12, sorry, down 10. Down 11, 12, 13, because that broke. 14, that broke. Down 15. Down 16. Down 17. Down 18. All right, so we're getting close there. <laughs> uh, not terrible. I'm really unhappy with that that really throws my score way down there. Uh, so we're looking at a 72 is my total score there, I think. Oh, sorry, 82 is my total score there. Um, so I'm a, a ways from that 90, but if that was up on where I needed it to be, I could have gotten a lot closer to that, to that 90 score. So one more thing on that, and this was uh, just the fun challenge of how I run my red dot and how I run everything at this distance. To be that accurate, to be that precise where I put my dot at, I tend to have my dot on the highest brightness setting. Uh, that's for daytime or nighttime because I run really powerful lights and you need to have a bright, bright, bright dot. This is the RMO9, so that's the one MOA dot, but when you have that full brightness, that's a lot larger. And with that, it was probably covering about, in my eyes, because I'm in astigmatism as well, probably covering all that black for the most part. So it's just the challenge that I have to do. So one thing I could have probably done better on that is maybe used a top or a bottom of the dot to actually set it where I needed to. Uh, I was just trying to put it roughly in the center and just, you know, good grip control to really support that trigger to not throw these shots. So there we go. All right, so to break down exactly what I've been running, I have the Gen 4 Glock Model 40. I have a Surefire X300 Turbo, the new high candela light out. I have an RMR09 from Trijicon, that's the one MOA dot, and that is mounted on the factory MOS plate that it comes with. I have appropriately sized screws as well for the RMR, and then factory Glock mags, of course. We shot Remington 180 grain UMC, and for the carry ammo, I ran the Underwood 180 grain jacketed hollow points. So one of the biggest questions I had before shooting this gun was can I take 10 millimeter and replace nine millimeter with it? After shooting this gun for about a month, thousand rounds through it, I, I could. I don't think that the performance difference is, is drastic enough for me to go, I don't feel comfortable with it. I don't think I can actually defend my life with it, whether it be, you know, a two-legged 
threat or a four-legged threat, right? And I think it's definitely doable. If you have a solid foundation with shooting any gun that's semi-auto, you can come over to this and actually achieve it too. It does take a lot of grip strength, and when you do the higher round counts, it definitely taxes you quite a bit. The biggest difference, I would say, is gonna be cost, because shooting this 10 mil practice ammo is like 60 cents a round plus right now, where I can buy my nine mil target ammo for 30 cents a round as of current day times. <laughs> and one great thing here at works is whether I wanna carry a large frame Glock, like this Glock Model 40 here, or more traditional Glock 19 or Glock 45, Glock 17, is we have holsters for all of those setups with various lights. I'm gonna go back to my trusty Glock 45. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Feel free in the comments below to tell us what gun you want us to review next. Stay safe and carry a light. Thank you.